Huh? What's this here? What, Coronation Street? Our heroes. All right, love. Oh, bless Thank you, man. You. We are, to be fair. <laughs> no, they're dance, but he left them out. So the Do you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. If you leave it out, it's eaten. But is it all the rubbish one? This is, gonna, this is actually a conversation. Go on. Let's be honest, though. Uh, firstly, I'm appreciative of this, what you've come it's down the, here. It's the That's end. the first thing. I work for myself. Oh, you work for yourself? I was being nice. So, so we got... Okay, nice. All right, but I'm, I appreciate that the fact that you've came and you've brought these to off... Like, you've offered them to the man name, yeah? Oh, so you came? Huh? No, go on. But, pause. <laughs> but, is there really a good box of these? What do you mean? Coronation Street's a shit. Coronation what Street. What are they called? Are they called Coronation Street? Quality Street. Same thing. <laughs> Same thing. Roses. Ain't they called Roses? Roses well? are dead. Dead. Unless outcasts. What's the dead. other ones? There's biscuit ones as well. There's Shit. One, what's the one you said before? Coronation Street. No, no, not Coronation Street. It's then Roses. No. No, no. Roses. Did you, did the you biscuit call ones. That box of those. Maybe well, I heard In it, Heroes, what There's is. There's another one. There is another one. And it's got like, celebration. celebration. Dead. Wait, what's No, no, it's not. What's celebration is all right. It's got a little bounty in there, little Maltese. Let me see celebration. Look galaxy chocolate. Galaxy caramel. Galaxy caramel. There's little vibes in there. Celebration, celebration. Yeah, it's a discussion, but I feel like we should celebrate oh, celebrations. Oh, yeah. You know what? I hear that. Celebrations are all right, innit? I hear that, yeah. Come celebrations on. are all right still. Come on. I, I, feel, like I, I usually always go Mars. for the Mars. I was like, uh, what? Mar- you don't, Mar- 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 I go for Bounty. No, I feel Milky Way is the meatiest one. Milky Way is it's, terrible. It's childish. Exactly. So it's, it's Bruh, not for Man, I had a Milky Way in. Uh, my yeah, granny but, used to buy me Milky Ways. That's how I know that was dead. Yeah, but Mars is <laughs> but Mars is a grown chocolate that's dead. Milky Way is like watching Teletubbies and expecting to connect. Like, no. Mar- Galaxy's dead as well, though. What? Galaxy's dead. What galaxy? Galaxy. Nah. To bits. Nah. What are you talking about? Mars is dead. I what think is Galaxy's Mars? more dead than what is Mars. Mars. Mars ice cream bags. Mars ice cream is cold. Yeah. Well, it should be, it's an ice cream. But Mars is dead. <laughs> <laughs> <We're safe. laughs> no, nah, but Galaxy's dead, bro. Nah, I disagree. Serious? I disagree. Yeah, I disagree. Well, you think that Galaxy's more of a wave than Mars? 100%. You're going off, you're off your rocker. You can do a poll. You you're off your rocker. Fam, me? Leave it in the comments. I'm off my rocker. Leave it in the comments. No, no, sorry, no. Mars, He's, is, Mars is dead. Whack. Dead. Wow. Mars is not, it's not the deadest one anyway. Milky Way is the deadest one. Maltesers, I feel like it's starting to become dead now as well. But Snickers, see the Snickers, Bounty, and what? Twix. Yeah. No, 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 I'm a Twix don still. Yeah, Twix is cold. I'm a Twix don Twix is a proper still. thing. Snickers is a proper thing as well. Yeah, Snickers is proper. Bounties are a, a vibe thing. Depends ba- on vibe to, I think I like Bounty as I became more of a man. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I never liked Bounty when I was a youth. That was too... I felt like that was too mature for me. And then the older you get, you appreciate the You start sound. appreciating Become a Bounty that. killer. I hear yeah, you. Yeah, right then. Exactly. Come on. That's Come probably on. what it was. I started that- to understand the connection between the Bounty and Bounty killer. And I said, yeah. Whereas before, where I, probably why I didn't fuck with it was the negative connotation of what a Bounty is. And I'm going to be honest with you. what I'm saying. When man told me what a Bounty was, I didn't want Bounty. I didn't want the Bounty. Call me immature. Right. I don't care. Marcus Houston. I'm over there. Absolutely. So, to be honest with you, the mature I became, I realised Bounty's not really that bad. I ate it one time. Although the coconut chocolate flex for me at the start... You don't like it. ...was a bit left. Because it's not a common thing for me. Okay. The caramel thing's a common thing for me. So if I eat caramel in a chocolate... I can compare it to other chocolates and say Mars is dead. Some people like it, but who am I to judge, Chucky? Yeah. But when you go back to things like Bounty, you're like, you know what? Let me try it again. It's all right. But then you have then you have things like Twirl. Dairy milk wins. Twirl is Always. dairy milk. Dairy milk wins. DM, come on, fam. But Twirl dead. Twirl's not dead. It's an crunchy impo- is dead. Don't even do that. No, Friday. You are crazy. Nah, from me one. You like crunchy? Come on. Dead. Nah. Crunchy's a proper thing. if you man told me that you like fudge, no, fudge you are fucking dead. Good. Nuts. It's but you know what it is? It's not the first one that you might eat them. Hey, twirl isn't dead, by the way. Twirl is just a... Twirl it's an impartial dead, chocolate. You shouldn't even have an opinion on it. Yeah. But you can say fudge is dead. Yeah. I don't even know what this is. A Claire. Oh, yeah, Claire. The Claire is all right still. So. Mm. Whisper. This is, these are shit chocolates, bro. Want me whisper? You like whispers? Mm. Jesus, crispy. Huh? Dairy milk is cool. 
Mm-hmm. It's cool. Like, it gets a pass still. But I think, like, do you know what it is with dairy milk? I love caramel still. Dairy milk is like the, it's like a cheap version of, like, the bougier chocolate. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it, it works because it it's is. It's a Zara. It is. Right. It's so Zara. That's what I'm saying? Mm. But then you might, you'll go Selfridges and you'll realise that this is Lickle Man. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? You'll go Scandinavia, go to the airport, get chocolate there and realise. That's mm-mm. an essential it's an essential chocolate. It's Cream Zara, egg is terrible. What else was there? Cream egg. Cream no, I don't want that. What else was there? That is terrible. That is that's. I need like two more chocolates. That what goes down in the. What, do you want the next one? Do you want the, the thing? I like two more. Twelve. What? Twelve. What's this one? Jerry, what kind of? I give you a twelve. No, thank you. Twelve. I'll have that over that. Fudge. Do you laugh? Fudge. No way. What else but, is there? Um, what else is there? One more. Uh, cream egg. No. What else? Must be something else. Crunchy, no. I gave him a crunchy. That was the last. Oh my god! This is uh, this is proper shit. What? What is this? This is supposed to be the double decker thing, but it's a smaller version I think of double the deck. Is quite nice. Oh no. my god! Double deck is dead. What's that? Wait, do you like lion? What's lion? lions? Are all right. Remember the lion bar? Oh, lion bar was all right. It's so. all right. Yeah, lion bar was all right. So, Yorkie, Yorkie's a rude boy thing. Yorkie and um, biscuit and raisin. Is I it? think Yorkie was the cheaper version of dairy milk. I think it tasted like. It didn't taste as good as Dairy Milk. Yorkie is shit, bro. What is going on here? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Are you serious? I, I'm saying it didn't taste as good as Dairy Milk. I like Yorkie. Like, you like Yorkie, bro? I just want Soccer AM. <laughs> if you want Soccer AM, you feel me. Uh, Yorkie, <laughs> big man thing. That Yorkie chocolate there, is horrible. before you eat it, you have to train your teeth. It's not like Dairy Milk that you yeah, bite yeah, in it. So Yorkie's a, v- yo, violent, bi- it's a Google violent worst, chocolate, you know? Google the worst chocolates, the worst right. rated chocolates. One second. Mm. <laughs> one second. Worst rated biscuits are the funniest ones, innit? Best biscuit. What's your best biscuit? Actually, I'm Turkish. Do... What? Oh no, sorry. I'm just like... What's it? Yeah, it is. This. What, Turkish delight? The Turkish thing. Have you ever had that? Oh, the Turkish delight. Turkish delight's horrible. That is the shittiest chocolate. I didn't, you know, the first, I didn't even know that was a chocolate. I just think it's a shame. Fudge is in there, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, Boost. Horrible. I Crunch. Huh? Now, Boost, uh, do you know what? I did actually eat a Boost recently. Still. Right, pause, man, bad. pause. Double Decker's in there, but Chomp. Fucking hell. Chomp, terrible. Um, mm. uh, pic- that's a disrespect. Picnic is cold. No, nope. you know picnic is actually pick a nigger. That's another story. What? Mm. Swear. Come on, do your research. Well, I ain't eating that again. Wow. Um, wow. You really yeah, top, topic as well is another shit one. <laughs> topic is just like kind of rel- again impartial. Nah, topic is a leftover chocolate bar. It's, it isn't it. They put everything that's left. Over. Milky topics bar left. is dead, bro. Do you know what topic is in flake case, for me? Flake's nice. Flake is shit. No, Flake is not dead. I wouldn't eat what? What's going on? You, don't eat, you have an ice cream and a Flake. Yeah. Did what? you not have a oh, child? Yeah, I hear that. Don't do that to your child. But even then, I think the Flake is the shittest part of that yeah. whole experience. Well, yeah. I only ever did it because I only used to do it because it was part of the culture. Like, if I went to the ice cream van and I'm getting one of them, he would just stick the thing in it. To me, if you didn't have a Flake in your ice cream, you was broke. Yeah, so, I hear that. So, like, you can't come there with just an ice cream and a cone. Put the Flake in and get some sauce. Oh, you couldn't afford the, the 20p more? Yes, people, 20p. 20, 20p. Times yeah. have changed. Um, uh, What was the fucking ice cream that used to, where they used to call it the screwball at the bottom? Oh, my God. Um, it was called a screwball. Was it not, called a screwball? Screwball, yeah, screwball. That, that was, was there was another name, though. I'm sure but there was called a screwball. Name. Yeah, that was it. I used to love it. had the ice thing. cream. It had all the sauce around the side and the ice cream. And are you mad? Caramac. I used to be addicted to that still. Is that what it's called? Caramac? Why didn't it called something else? You know, this one. What's that? That one. Remember that one? It's the old school team. That one. Did you ever remember seeing that? Caramac is disgusting. You never see that? What time is that? It's this one, eh? I never, I never tried that. I Caramac that had that. dust in it in I the shop. I tried that with um, Sunny Delight. Caramac and Sunny Delight? Yeah. You went to a private school, man. Or you went to no a school way. with white kids. Nah, he would have been on the ceiling, bro. They went to a school yeah. with white kids. <laughs> <laughs> because there is no Wait. school where there's just predominantly niggas and they're having Caramac. Yeah, I was having caramel. Like, no, my school never went. My, I, but hey, my school was predominantly white. Oh, there you go. Remember? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. of course. Come I remember. Caramel makes sense then. Yeah. Even now, I still am mind blown. I'll be honest with you. 
even at this age and this time in life, when yeah. I go past a school and I see loads of black youths together, or like black and Asian, like coming out of school together, it blows my mind. My school was Broadwater Farm. Mm, I know. My school was D and K. St. David's and St. Catharines was... Nah, that school was terrible. That school was terrible. Absolutely terrible with Chucky. There was just predominantly black kids. The white kids were clearly the minority. You're not selling this good for black people, by the way. No. <laughs> my, because they it's just totally went and... terrible. It was predominantly black It was black terrible. Kids. But it was, though. I can't yeah. lie about the history. It doesn't... Yeah. They've done an investigation. Yeah, it was in the evening no, standard. No. They had a double-page spread. A teacher went in there undercover and basically done a report on the school and let them know the school was nuts punching up teachers it was oh, shout yeah. out everyone that went DNK if you survived God bless you bro yeah if you didn't go to jail if you didn't go to jail you didn't end up fucking I don't know man but I guess it's all, all of these things are like deep Part problems it. innit yeah it's all relative as well someone else might go yeah but it wasn't that bad because in my time this yeah, happened yeah their or, experiences might fair enough different. mine again yeah, when I but your school was bad though, right? But for a different reason. Yeah, mine was bad for a different reason. It was still very like a low income school and whatever. And and you would say that like a lot of a lot of the, my friends that I were friends with in that mm. they ended up like well my first friends ended up like um, drug addicts and all of that shit. I always remember I've said this before. I remember when my brethren first started bunking and that, or they were bunking, right. and I'm like, all right, cool. You know what? Fuck it. One day I'm gonna bunk. I just thought, I'm just going, I'm going out with them. Gary, my that was my best friend, yeah? yeah. Said, all right, cool. Gary was out there now with a couple of the other men them now. So I'm like, all right, cool. We've gone into school. We've signed in, yeah? You know, you do the register. They call out your name, boom, boom, boom. First class is science now. So this is easy because I hate science, yeah? Honorable <laughs> shout out to Dr. Sidhu. So anyway, boom, we've gone. I've gone, we've gone into the subway. Yeah. So you come out of school, it's like about a 10, 15 minute walk, there's a subway, right? And it's right near where my old estate was. So we're just in the subway now. This is October, right? Them times there, seasons were seasoning. So it wasn't like, you see like November now, it could all be fucking 25 degrees. It wasn't like that. When it was November, it was cold and it was dark. Freezing. Yeah. So anyway, we're just in subway now. Yeah, We're just in the subway, just chilling and that. And then we're just talking for a bit. And then like, it just kind of just dawned on me a bit like, I said to them, like, so what? Like, what, what are we doing? Like, what's the move in that? And they was like, nothing. And I thought, wait, so what? Is this what we do? Yeah. Because I thought bunking meant... Excitement. Right, exactly. Yeah. We're going somewhere, an adventure. We're going to check. Yeah. Do you know what? Maybe it was going to be like, we bunk, and then there's like other people from other schools that are bunking, and then we just all link together. We play football. We do things or whatever. You're telling me to say that we're going to be chilling in a subway all day in the cold. Listen, I went straight back to school. I don't blame you. The thing is, bunking was dangerous back in the day. Because bunking, if there wasn't a motive behind bunking, it just meant that you were lurking. And if you were lurking, Nothing. you're prey. Right. And there are predators. Like robberies back in the day. I don't know what they're like now. No, so it, but, wasn't, it wasn't like that in my area though too much. Oh, my area, Chucky. Man would rub laces from your trainers. I've seen man get their yeah. crep yeah, taken that. off their feet. Off their feet. I've seen phones. Oh my Lord. The amount of phones <laughs> I used to see God. getting robbed back in the day, yeah? Sometimes I used to be like, I'm so happy my cousins are who my cousins are. Yeah. And I used to try and help. You know, you try and help the other youths, but oh, sometimes... Allow him, like, oh, allow, allow him, man. Because you couldn't just stand there because afterwards you're all standing together. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> now what? <laughs> yeah, you got to be seen to be doing something. Can't just pretend it never happened and just go, what are you saying, man? I want to go get food or... It's not that, <laughs> in it? So, my brother, I tried. So, yeah. Mm. Back in the day, I don't know. I just... Bunking was, just... was a boring... But let me tell you something, Kira. But wait, what was going on that... in your area, though? Because in Wood Green, you had... It was a racist Chicano. area. So we had Shikana, which was like a... Not Shikana, sorry. We had Sega Park. So Sega Park was a... In Chocadero, you had Sega World, and there was a smaller equivalent in Wood Green. Right, So okay. if you bunked in Wood Green, yeah. you would go Sega Park. So, okay. Basically, so now coming from what we should have done is... Park. Talking of that, what we should have done is we should have jumped on a bus and went to Harrow because Harrow had um, one of them flipping arcade joints where so, people used to go why did you do that saying. we didn't I weren't thinking of that I think that these times I was in year 7 innit so like you was bunking in year 7 yeah but no, you look, was a rebel do you know what let me tell you something you no, was a I rebel. only bunked for like I bunked for one class but let me tell you something here yeah? no tell a lie that was year 8 but I ended up being the best it was still young but I ended up being the best thing because 
I realized in that moment, I didn't have nothing in common with these men really. And then I ended up gravitating more to my brethren. Where's you still my brethren to this day? Uh, my brethren, Dwayne, Damien, who like, Damien, honorable shout out to Damien actually. He came to, remember the R&B and slow jams thing that I did at site five outside, it was in May, you was there. Yeah. It was outside the weather and that was good. He turned up. I was so mad to see him because he used to go to my school. And like, he's like, yeah, I always watch your thing or whatnot. And like, That's Damien my... was my, like, is my guy. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I gravitated to them and they were more like, in a school where it was predominantly white, these were black youths that were more into the things that I was into. Yeah. And one being music. Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, Gary and them lot, like, I loved them, but they were, we just wasn't really into the same thing. The only thing that I probably liked that they, that they could have maybe appreciated was the fact that I liked Gary's cousin. That was it. I used to fancy the pants of Gary's cousin. So that was the only thing. Yeah, that's time and experience. Right. Yeah. So, but with um, with Dwayne and, and, and Wesley and them, we were into the same music and that. We weren't in the same classes, but when playground, when it was time for lunchtime, us, we were together. Fion as well. We were together. And from that, we ended up building a stronger bond and we were just always together. Now, Gary was someone I'd still see. Mm. I still see him a lot because he lived in my area or whatever and same with my other two my other two friends. But they sort of went that way and I went this way. And even later on in life, when I, you know, stumbled across them, yeah, man, like their their life took a, a real interesting turn. But it wasn't just because of it wasn't just it was an area thing, but it was also a parent thing as well. Like they were really going through it. I've mentioned it I've mentioned this before. Like when I was young, mm. there was enough things that I saw, bro, that to me was normal at the time. But it's actually, only until up. when I got get older, mm. like I realised, nah, this ain't normal. Like, I always refer to the time when I went to I don't want to call out his name because his name's so distinctive, yeah. But I've gone to his yard and the way that my mind processed the yard was this. I could go in the house and I could do what I want. To me, that felt like freedom. <laughs> I'm in his house, because in my yard, we couldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Firstly, yeah, yeah. you see when you come in my yard, first you've got to take off shoes. Come on. Yeah? I could just walk in my man's yard with my shoes on. Come on. Oh, that was amazing to me. Come yeah? on. It's the small little things. Also, in my yard, like respect and all these type of things. Now, obviously, respect is a good thing. Of course. But you see when you're young and you're just trying to figure certain things out, sometimes disrespect just seems nice. It feels yeah. fun. <laughs> it's no, rare. I could go in his yard and be as disrespectful as I wanted. It was now, I wasn't going to yeah. be, I wasn't disrespectful, but as far as I'm concerned, dad's sleeping. Mum ain't there. The mum ain't there. The dad's sleeping. There's no TV in the yard. But you know what? We could just flip in break dance in here. We could throw things around. I could pick things up. I could chuck it. I could do everything I wanted in this house. You see, now I'm a big man. Do you know what I realised was going on in that house? Yeah. The mum left them. The dad was an alcoholic and a drug addict. The dad was just on the floor, bro. Yeah. These didn't have no TV. There was no food in the yard, no nothing. And that was their reality every day. That was their reality every day. So you can only imagine where their life would have ended up taking them as they got older. Of course they were bunking. 100%. Of course they were smoking. Of course they were the, the- They don't know boundaries. Exactly. And the system almost has forgotten about them and left them. There was a, um, they like, ironically enough, they got fostered to my, my grandparents. So I remember one time going to my, my granny's yard after school and they was in my granny's yard. I mean, these two white youths is in my granny's yard, yeah? But my gran used to um, foster kids and stuff like that. So they, my gran looked after them for, I think a year while whatever was going on with the, with the dad and whatever, and then they ended up going back to their dad. But yeah, like it made all the sense in the world for them to be bunking and doing all these yeah, type of, of things. Course. But my situation was not really like that. Yeah. My mum was kind of on top of me when it came to certain things. And also the subway wasn't cutting it for me. So you know what? I'm going back to school and I'm hanging with Dwayne, Damien, Wesley, and we're gonna do music. Do you know what's so crazy when you tell me about your experiences in West London? I think about North London. North London's just not, or well, my experiences in North London at the time are not like that. They're just not like that. North London was almost like, maybe I don't watch Lord of the Rings. I imagine it to just be loads of different tribes and people and they meet up in a battlefield. That was North London. There was bare schools and the battlefield was wood green. And that's where you would meet up. So if you bunked, the only place to go to, to have fun, is the battlefield. But in the battlefield, there are so much things you have to avoid. You just gotta ask yourself, 
is it even worth bunking? Like bunking's not even safe, really. Yeah, because you're gonna be out in the, in the on the high road. road now. You wanna go R price or something like that at the time? Yes, I'm old. Oh, price, you wanna yeah. go and get your little CD or something like that during the time where you should really now are you seen school uniform? Hey, what uniform is that? Oh, Let's go shit. ask. Yo, fam, what are you saying? Where's your tie from, fam? Yeah, you look at the colour of the tie. Now nah, they're looking at your tie. Now we're asking you to jump. I've got my money in my sock. I can say I'm Wait, window shopping. Wait, they're asking shopping. you to jump? Brother, you don't understand. Yeah. And robbery, and back in the day, yeah, I don't know what it's like now. So why would a man just tap your pocket? So he's just telling you no, to jump? No, it's an embarrassment thing. Man will, man will rob you on the high road in front of everyone. People are walking by like it's an exhibition. Oh, my God, bro. So really and truly, bunking in our area, you have to be a bad boy to bunk. That's why the people that were good just stayed in school. It's safe. <laughs> yeah, no one's going to trouble you. I hear that. One thing, and one more thing I liked about DNK. If you were just doing your work, man left you to just do, do your, your work. work. Yeah, because you if, were just on your... I hear that. I hear that. If you troubled the person that just was a good boy doing their work, oh, everyone got on you. Yeah. Ruba, everyone got on you. Yeah. If you try flirt in both worlds, yeah. you have issues, man. That's why you see yeah, me... You couldn't do both. Good boy, me. Good boy, me. Yeah, it was a difficult world, man. St. Thomas More's in my area. D&K. Highgate Wood weren't really on no smoke. Horses on smoke. Langham. Jesus Christ. MPK. Serious. MPK has a legacy of smoke. Like, all of these schools. Oh, White yeah, Hart Lane. Yeah, it's shit, crazy. Bro. Like, I North London was mad. Bro. I can't even... You know, I, sometimes I've, spoke, I've spoken to youths before that have been talking about... You know, like they can't even like going to school. The journey of going to school is techie because they got to go for a certain ends yeah, to bro. get to their school. Yeah, there was a boy I was looking after because I used to do youth work as well. So there was a boy I was looking after that used to. We were trying to get him into football. He lived in Tottenham and he had to go to a school in Hornsey. So his journey, and obviously he had problems in Wood Green. So his journey is going through one area to get to his school. Oh man. And having to speak to yet another boy, and this is why it's so mad about people that move to this country and want to start repping ends and being bad. I get it. I understand it to an extent. But as you get older, you have to realise your parents are the reasons why you're in that area. Right. We had one individual who i done youth work with, really good at football. We caught him Charles of Tottenham at one point, once, uh, once upon a time um, through Clasford. Clasford's a good man. But he's a Tottenham boy. So at that point, Tottenham had problems with Edmonton. Where did his mum move to? Edmonton. Now we have to drive him home. Oh, no. So it's just like, oh, mate, in the ends, I'm just thinking about it now at the time of school, youth club, all of that. It was just not like what you're describing. No, my, my thing was, was actually a war different. zone. And only now, as we're speaking, you're speaking about getting older, realising certain things are not normal. My brother, none of that was normal. It was actually a war zone, Chucky. But it felt normal, though. It felt no Going high road and realising you might get robbed. You just have to go and call five, five, six man. And that's just normal. You don't huh. travel by yourself, like, at certain times. To have, it's not a normal thing. Yeah, mine was more like, listen, mate, you're black. With the, yeah, listen, mate, remember that, mate. You're fucking black. Yeah? It was, there was some of them. But, you it's know what? grew up in the 60s. <laughs> like, that's all mine. Yeah, I'm telling you. But you know what it is, yeah? They, them times there, when I was growing up, that was, like, being pushed out a little bit. And, and... Also, the man then was fighting them. Like, I remember oh, my God. cousin, so my cousin used to always come to my, 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 my end and that. And then uh, I don't even, I wasn't even, I don't know, I, was, I didn't see what happened, but all I knew is that one of the, uh, like, the known, notorious, like, bad boy, white boy racist said something to my cousin, innit? Yeah. yeah. So then, obviously, a couple of my cousins did not love the idea of that. Yes. So they went to his yard. And it was funny, yeah, because. You see, like, when you come, when you grow up in a certain area... Actually, I don't even think it's a certain area, yeah? But when you grow up and you just keep hearing this person's surname and they have this aura of bad boyism around them, yeah? Yeah. But then they're confronted with proper bad boys. Yeah. You start to see that, hold on, wait a minute. Oh, what? You're a bit soft, ain't you? Your whole team's perception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's My man burger. was in the yard quivering. Serious. Yeah. And it was like, those things are eye-openers because it's like... Wait, there's not even a lot of us outside here, by the way. And the way that you lo- the way that you move, you go on like you're flipping, you're going to just collapse a whole community of people. But we're outside. And also, bearing in mind, when my cousins have come outside, they weren't coming outside on the thing of, oh, everyone's going to rush him. It was, come outside, this one who is your age is going to have a square dance with you outside. <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah, come outside now. 
Yeah. So that's it. It's not like, are oh, you going to come outside and get beat? No. This cu- my cousin, he this one here is your age. You come outside and then you two now do that and try and see if you're going to do all of that. Yeah, but bro, there was a whole load. There was a lot going on. So I'm not going to go into all of that. But, but it was but like Let me that. put it this way. Because I don't pro- promote violence. It was discipline. That's but you appreciate it has to happen it was, sometimes. It was discipline. It wasn't violence. It was just discipline. There's a difference. Yeah? But anyway, going back, to Ga- going, going back to Gary. Yeah? One time I was at Gary's yard. Gary said, um, I'm sitting at his yard now and he's, we're playing computer and that. His mum's like, yo, um, his mum's like, Gary. She's kept, she keeps calling him. He's not answering her. That was the first, like, that's for me, <laughs> for me, that is insane. Yeah. yeah. My, my mum calls me. Yes, mum. Come on. Right. So anyway, now he's not answering her. Then she shouts, "Your dinner's on the table." Oh, mum, shut up. Pardon? <laughs> and then what? And then so I'm waiting to hear. <laughs> you know, like you hear the, the forks coming up. The yeah, like I'm waiting to hear something happen. Nothing happened, and I never forget. I came home. It might have been the next day. I'm in my room. My mum's called me. I thought, you know what? I'm just not even answering. I'm just testing it now, innit, yeah? So I'm just playing the computer and like, my mum calls me again. Then my mum calls me again. I said, oh. Then I thought, nah, I can't say it. <laughs> I you can't say it. I quickly, you know. I quickly turned into, yes, mum. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, man, my thing weren't set up like that. My See? thing weren't set up like that. I knew my thing weren't set up like that. We had six people in the two bed, so if mum called you, you heard. Can't pretend you didn't hear. Right, yeah. It's too small. Exactly. It's too small for us to pretend you can't hear. And one of someone in the house will tell you, mum's calling you. Brother. Oh, man, love that one. In, is he in the family house? Man loves that especially one. If you, especially if they know it's licks involved. What? Yeah. See, when the cousins used to come together, you're in the big family house now. Oh, your mum's calling you. Oh, did you hear it? And everyone knows you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah, Everyone's yeah. busting up in the corner now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, someone's gonna get beats. Yeah, man, they loved it. Did I loved the family time. Did you ever do Christmas at your granny's yard? We used to do it every mom's year. Mom's? Every year at my grandma's and then convert it to every year at my uncle's. So I've only known Christmas like that, to be fair. And what did that look like at granny's? Uh, granny's and uncle's was the same. A massive Christmas tree, bare presents underneath it, the whole family there, loads of food. You stayed, you knew that. But that's what our family did. We Every birthday or what have you, everybody came. Um, it's not the same now, but yeah, that's how I knew Christmas. The whole why, family. Why is around. it the same now? Um, discrepancies. Discrepancies within family. Yeah, family. Yeah. But I think it's a universal thing. I could, I could be mistaken, but when I speak to loads of people my age, I think it could be a universal thing that the generation before us were kind of forced to stay together because there wasn't much people like you were speaking about in your area not much um, black people so everyone's kind of forced to stay together with your cousins and they don't even like that much but we're all together in it mm. and then what happens is as you get older and then there's more black people and there's more people to socialize with and it's safer you have options all of a sudden people exercise those options and then family doesn't become as significant as it once was purely because there are more enticing options outside of family which are cooler I guess or nicer people I just think unfortunately the idea of family that we had previously sorry to go so deep of it is kind of it goes past whether you like them or not it's like you have to yeah, be there yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not whether you like them or not so then eventually you're spending Christmas and multiple Christmases or birthdays or whatever with people that essentially you don't like and then That's once you get older true. you're like what you mean I can have the choice of who I want to spend my birthday with this year we're going to Dubai. You come, you yeah. come, you come. I do not want to spend it with you time. no more. And you have a great time and you realise I ain't even trying to go back to that now. Do you know where I'm coming from? So I, I kind of think that's what we're... Um, that's what my family's guilty of. Yeah. You know? Mine, just, is, mine was just more... So like, so, on, on my dad's side of the family, it's massive. There's bare things going or whatever. But I've always chose to spend it with like my mum's side because it's a lot smaller. My great-grandmother's alive. Them times then, my, my, obviously my nan, my granddad was alive. We used to always be at my granny's yard. And like, granny's yard, and I'll probably say this for a lot of like Caribbean families as well, yeah, is that like, granny's yard is usually the yard that holds everything together. Even when people don't like each other and that, everyone's always at granny's yard. But in in my mum's, 
side of the family, I wouldn't say that it wasn't a thing of like people not liking each other or whatever. It was just super small. And, but there was like just a nice little family unit. But you know what? I think the reality is, is that things change, isn't it? My granny died. My granny died years ago. We still was doing... Um, that must have a big impact massive, though. Massive, massive. Then we're still doing <coughs> Christmas at hers. But you got to think like, that's, there's just a lot of change in that. But then, yeah, we'll still do Christmas at the house anyway because my granddad still lives there and family still comes there or whatever. And then, like, and then, yeah, then, like, my granddad died. My granddad died. Then, obviously, my stepdad died, my bonus dad died and all of that. And then I, it just has got to a stage now where it's like, my mum's not even on trying to cook. She's not trying to do any of that. She doesn't even want to... The, the family's so much more smaller now that the desire to even want to do it isn't even so much there for her. Now, whereas I could go and be with my family on my on my dad's side and do loads of things, but I'm not going to leave mumsy on her ones. It's so I just go and just, I just go and spend that with my, and now we're just going to a restaurant, which is nice. But I think like, if I had my own family, if I had my own family, what would probably happen is now, my mum would just come over to my, mine with me and my kids and my family and then we would probably end up building it that way you know what I'm saying and then like when my kids have kids then we'd probably be doing it at my house and it would just be like an offspring like that but I don't have that yet so that's not there we just go have a little something to eat it's sad because I was watching I was with my G Sana I was with Sana yesterday honourable shout out to Sana and I was with Keish and we were watching some Christmas films by the way I had a wicked conversation with her yesterday she's cool isn't it so yeah, we're having um, we're watching some some Christmas films, and you all the Christmas films you watch are so centered around family, mm. and then all three of us have without going into details, can shall we speak about mine? We have such complex situations with our families. You watch those things, and a part of you kind of resents the idea of it all. Yeah, go and speak because it's like it's almost like I had it, but I didn't have it. Mm. So you have it, but you don't really have it. Like you just have this Christmas thing that you don't. You've kind of fallen into, and you have to do. You're not quite. You're not quite sure why you're doing it, but you do it every year. And then you're like, you have to buy presents, and it doesn't. In my head, anyway, it doesn't really make sense on what's going on. But everyone does it, so everyone does it. I'm like, ah, cool. And then it just becomes in this idea and this pressure that you got to buy presents and be around for people and buy presents for people because they are certain people in your life. But I don't like something for you. <laughs> irrespective of whatever position you hold and who you're meant to be, just in actual reality, away from the ideal, I just don't like some of you. So I don't even want to be here. I don't even want to speak to some of you lot. Like that becomes a real thing. And then when you speak to other family members that feel the same way, all of a sudden you realise that your view is shared amongst more than one person. That kind of kills the whole concept of Christmas and family for you. So then when you watch someone do it, because you only have your experience to go to and then the people you will share it with are within your family and it's a similar one you kind of don't even think like it's possible you don't even feel like it's possible or if it is possible it's based upon some false fabrication of having to stay with people because of their label in opposed to who they are <clears throat> so I don't know just the desire of free choice becomes a little bit more appealing to you than the pressure of having to share an experience with someone purely because of the societal status the label gives rather than do I fucking like you no and I hear that and do you know what the maddest thing is <clears throat> hearing you speak just reminds me <clears throat> that like I think sometimes people will spend that time yeah. with relatives but not family though yes yes that's yes. the difference do you get yes. what I'm saying yes very true and I think that like it would probably be sit like I'm not sitting here and saying I'm going to be an advocate for this and I'm not saying it's even that deep but I'm saying that like you know what maybe there could be more Christmas films based upon Paul sorry I'm just getting Santa a cab that's why I was taking long carry on Um, there could be more Christmas films based upon being with family and not relatives so being with people that you actually really care about that are not necessarily your relatives but they're your family like you're my family 100%. 100%. I consider you my family. 100%. I would spend Christmas... If my situation was different with my... And even then, yeah. you'd be more than welcome to come and sit with me and my mum and have dinner with I would us. feel like Do that. you get what I'm saying? I would feel like... And, vice and I know that I could take my mum to yours and we could... You understand what I'm saying? But if also, if my situation was different, me spending Christmas with you and a few other people, to me, is spending Christmas with family, but the dynamics... 
is not the same social construct that we know it to be with just like the mum, the dad, the sister, the uncle, the this, the that, then it's all relatives. And look, like obviously in a lot of cases, everyone does get on in this or they get on for the time or whatnot and they have a really good time. But yeah, like life is very complex and there is a lot of people that are in situations where they are, they don't have relatives to spend Christmas with. And that's actually okay. Because if you don't have relatives to spend Christmas with, you actually may have family. Your family is your brethren. Mm. Like someone that you're super close with. Mm. And you will have just as good of a time with them. And that. See, the way that I do Christmas anyway, yeah, is very minimal. But like in regards to doing the presents and stuff like that, that's all for the youths then. And there's not really much of them. You know, I buy something for my, my goddaughter, my godson. Um... Uh, I'll get something for my little brother and then I'll probably just give some money to my, my other brother and my sister and that. And then that's it. Bro, like, I'm not running up and down in Oxford Street like doing a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just not really doing it. I'm not knocking people for doing it. Because yeah, man. I know that like for some people there's, and I at the times when I was doing it, there was a time where I was like, really, it was fun and it was exciting and it was like, I'm like, going and I'm buying like all these little things and I'm wrapping them up and whatever and then you see like the little joy and people opening up presents or whatnot. But then I got to a point where I was like, that, right, for me personally, this is just a bit long. This is Chucky, a bit long. do you know this is going to sound very selfish? The moment I realise I have more to worry about, I am less concerned about trivial things that I now consider trivial. Like I'm not even, like I'm impartial to it. So Christmas, for example, as crazy as it sounds, and maybe it's trauma. I don't know how we're here. I am genuinely impartial to Christmas. Mm -hmm. If it happens, it don't happen. Like I used to, for example, I used to not go Oxford Circus around Christmas time because it was too busy. I don't care. I just don't care. It's Christmas, all right? There's people that are cool. I don't have any feeling towards Christmas. I'm not even a Grinch. Like so, people that care, I think it's sick. When I see people getting big presents and I see like the big tree, I'm like, that is cold. Mm. But I just don't feel compelled to be a part of it mm. in any in any capacity. And I can't even pretend that, like, Chucky, my dad sometimes used to get a big Christmas tree, a real one. He used to get you presents and then he'd get you small little yeah, yeah. gifts as well. Mm. On this. Brother, I had it all. I'm not going to sit here and pretend <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have a great you Christmas. Experienced, yeah, you experienced I experienced it. I had a great Christmas. We used to get presents all the... Brother, I just don't care. Would you... Would it be different if you had your kids? No. Do you, like I, you, do you feel like you would feel... It would feel different? Do you know what? Possibly. Because when I had them here, sometimes we done Christmas. But even then, to be honest with you, no, because they're Muslim. Oh, they okay. don't celebrate Christmas as well. Yeah. So it's just like... Yeah, I used to think that as well and people be like, oh, I just don't feel Christmas spirit. Do you feel Christmas spirit, Chucky? Do you feel Christmas spirit? No. I what don't is feel, Christmas spirit? I don't feel Christmas spirit anymore, but I feel like I will. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so... What will make I you felt, feel it? I felt Christmas spirit when I was younger. Yeah. And maybe from a selfish point of view, it was because I was getting presents. Yeah? Yeah. Then I got ah. older. <laughs> right, I was getting presents. And also... I got a little bit more older, I was being able to make my own little money, and then I was able to buy presents for people, and this put me in this Christmas spirit. And also knowing that, you know what, like, I'm gonna be at my granny's yard with, you know, my my aunties, my uncles, and then foster children and that as well, because my- That's my cold, because you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, we just had like a nice little dynamic in that, and we'd sit down together and open presents and all of that, yeah. Got a little bit older, that continued. Then I got more older and then I it was like, okay, presents don't really come my way so much anymore, which mm. is fine. But obviously I I'm happy to buy presents for people. I like to do things for people, yeah. Yeah. So then that would put me in the Christmas spirit. But then like I would probably say like the last four or five, maybe even six years, I haven't felt like Christmas spirit. But not in a negative way. It's just like you know what? I don't like. I enjoy the time off. I enjoy the time of like. Actually, no. Let me put it like this here. I enjoyed the busyness of being a DJ because at that time I was like 
just that was my, my only hustle. So I was DJing, so I'd do Boxing Day, you might do Christmas Eve, you might do some Christmas parties before then. Obviously, you know, New Year's Eve's coming up and whatnot. So when you're in, in, in these clubs constantly, around that time, you do feel Christmas spirit because everyone's yeah, yeah, celebrating. Course. Do you get what I'm saying? 100. From the family aspect now, I'm like, um, I just felt a little bit impartial. Like, this is nice. Food. I enjoy the food. My mum's going to cook up a storm and that, and that's going to be good. But then after that, it, it just kind of gets a little bit boring for me. And then like now, I just don't really feel the Christmas spirit at all. And I think it's got a lot to do with the dynamics of you know, my, my my granddad passed away and all of the dynamics of what I said before mm. and that. And like now it's just kind of, to me, this is just like a really nice time off. However, I do feel that I will feel Christmas spirit though, again, when companionship comes into my life in a strong way. I feel like mm. when companionship comes into my life in a strong way, and let's just say, you know, maybe by the grace of the most high we are able to have children and stuff like that i feel like because i'm when i say all the time i love love in it even if even if i don't feel the spirit so much i will create the spirit because i love love you get what i'm saying i'll do it for the missus i'll do it for the kids yeah, of course you, you get do what i'm saying i'll put on a costume and i'll do all of that type of stuff and i think for that it would make me feel the spirit but until then right now big man this is a nice time off this is probably time where I can go and check a couple of my brethren that I don't ain't seen for time. Um, Christmas Day, I'll be with Mumsy. We'll eat some food. I'll watch some. I'll watch a couple of films or whatever it may be. And then, and then yeah. Then the plan is just to look forward to to New Year's Eve and then start getting it cracking into the new year. Do you know what I think you've just said? You've touched upon some dope things about like what will make you feel or will trigger the Christmas emotion and then it made me start thinking as you were speaking about yeah I'll put on the suit if I have my family and all of that I was thinking so if I felt it why did I lose it and I'm thinking maybe it's the aspect of the things that you're saying like maybe certain family members that have passed away were more integral in creating the Christmas spirit than I actually thought so that with them not being there I'm just like I might just not feel that Christmas spirit because of because I love all my cousins I wish I could be all about them. I, w- I love it. Whenever I'm around with my cousins, I just feel like, ah, oh, free of judgment, you name it. It's incredible. But in the same breath, I'm like, Ross, so then why is there not an effort for something to happen? And I'm just like, maybe I never made that effort. So it just fell into my lap. But now, them integral members that made that happen just there. don't make it happen no yeah, more. Yeah. They're for whatever reason. And now it's there. for someone else to do it. But you've got to be inspired to want to do it. And maybe that in being inspired to want to do it just means maybe a change in dynamic or maybe someone, a new person that's come into your life or, you know, there's many different things, but just because you don't, but not feeling it, not feeling it is not a negative thing though. I think it's a multitude of things though. I also believe that, I think the foundation of the situation where it sounds like with loads of families, if they, if they can relate to this, is the fact that the family aspect is not actually there. Mm. And if it ever felt like it was there, maybe it was there under a misconception, which meant that it was always going to have an expiry date, which meant that this was always going to happen. So therefore, Christmas at some point was never going to mean anything anyway. Whereas if the perception of family was built upon pure principles, which are there through no matter what circumstance it means that Christmas spirit will always be there because you love your family so much that you would want to do a lot for them on a time where people are spending time with their family because of how much you love your family um, if you said you want to throw a Christmas something for a HC podcast because I consider this my family I probably would do whatever I need to do for it but then for my own family I'm not making that same effort maybe that family spirit is not there maybe it never was there I don't know but I'm always thinking about that incentive behind it because if Zion and Khalifa say, Papa, we want to celebrate Christmas, it doesn't matter if you're Muslim, you don't say, I'm not going to overthink the situation. We're getting a tree, I'm putting on a red suit, yeah. we're getting presents, we're having a laugh and we're keeping it moving. Yeah. It's not something that needs to be overthought or anything like that. So, yeah, if I'm having to overthink the situation or not on it at all, I think it's more, that's the, the, the problem. Well, yeah, I mean, as well, like for some some families... For some families, mm. there's certain traditions that were probably a lot stronger for them drink. than it was so much for us. Now, mm. yeah, look, like for a lot of people, Christmas is a massive thing. But I would probably say that in with my grandparents, being Christian in that as well, being proper church people, um, like th- this period of time was really big for them. So 
for that, for that, of course, in their house, it's going to replicate that. 100. And then when they go, it becomes very different. My mum obviously was, my mum, you know, took a lot of that on her shoulders and then, and, and still tried her best to create a vibe and whatever. And we did, like, we definitely did, but circumstances change. But guess what? It can change again. It can change again. And sometimes, as I said to you, that change could be just something that happens in my own life, which could be, you know, maybe someone that I've met or, you know, having children or whatever it may be and, and, and maybe looking at their values and how they see this time of the year and being a person who likes to give and do things for people, it, you know, it just kind of goes hand in hand. But until then, I'm actually all right with like wearing that one hat, people, huh? <laughs> wearing that one hat and chilling here. Yeah, wearing that one hat and chilling here, yeah. and then also looking at other people and being like, "Oh, you know, I'm happy for you," because it yeah. doesn't. Luckily for me, it doesn't. People enjoying this time of the year in the social constructs type of way or the traditional way mm. doesn't make me feel sad. It makes me feel happy. Oh, like that's good that you are having this and you're having that. But for a lot of other people, it's not the same because you know, again, what happens on Christmas you have a child or a young person or somebody who lives in this, this type of area who doesn't have friends or family like that and they are comparing themselves to a super multi-zillionaire mm. who's by a, like standing by a Christmas tree that is bigger than their whole house and there's presents that are fucking coming out of people's asses and all of that and that is making them feel some type of a way by seeing that because they feel like Right, I don't have that. And and to them it looks like this is this is how things are supposed to be. Which is sad and unfortunate and I understand it. I, and and I maybe I talk from a place of privilege where it's like for me I, I, I watch other people and I'm like, No, I'm happy for you. It's not this is not my story right now, but I'm good at I can watch other people do that and enjoy it. And be myself. like, Well done to you, yeah. yeah. Do you know what's so funny? Sorry to sway left in another conversation, but that just made me think of something I watched in the past week with Boosie and um Fat Joe. Right. You know, on Instagram Live and they were speaking about um, the complications of an artist today um, and why people hate so much okay. and you see where you were speaking about the comparison aspect of situations like that's interesting because artists Boosie was saying the reasons why people be hating on artists so much now because they can compare so much aspects of their life they have so right. much things to talk right. about right. back in the day it was just the music yeah. And you could just look at the music and that was your way of doing whatever it is that you needed to do. Whereas now today, you can see who their girl is, you can see who their kids are, you can see who their mum is, you can see where they go like to eat, you can see so much information. In the there's there's a hundred reasons to hate, that's what he said. Bruce said there's a hundred reasons to hate now. Probably even more. Maybe even more. But then the flip of that, sorry to go so left from the Christmas conversation, is like, I was thinking, Boosie, I can't lie, the only reason why I checked for you today is the hundred reasons to hate. <laughs> Who you you're one of the reasons but those hundred like Boosie you're an artist Yeah. so if it was just left to the art I wouldn't be here That's I don't really true. listen to your music <laughs> but guess what the hundred reasons to hate that you speak about is why I'm here Yeah. so yeah sorry I just thought I, that. I found that I so that. interesting I, I was that. like fuck I hate that still. that's so crazy but yeah Christmas and uh, good listen everyone that's celebrating it yeah, man, fucking go for it man is celebrating it and that. but you know what also though but honourable shout out to those who ain't do you know what I mean? Honourable shout yeah. out to those who wait. Honourable shout out to those who who would like to but don't have the the family or the friends or whatever around them to be able to to, to be able to do it. Honourable shout out to those who's kind of just in a place where they feel alone. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm always drawn to that. I'm always I love the family thing and all of that type of stuff. Yeah, but there's something in me that's always drawn to the the person who's who's pretending to keep it together. Do you know what I mean? The person who's trying to be trying to be strong about it and trying to be like, nah, do you know what? It's all right. Nah, it's all right, bro. Like, if you feel sad about it and you don't feel good about it, it's okay. Trust me. It's actually okay. But you know what? Maybe it's not going to help in saying this, but you're not alone, man. There's actually quite a lot of people that are probably feeling the same thing that you're feeling, even though you feel like it's only you. You're not. And better days will come. Like, better days will come if you want them to. If that's you want that's to, very true. If you don't days, want it, it ain't coming. If, if, if you don't want it, if you don't see it, you don't feel it, and you don't want it, then it's it's not going to come. You can't just wake up one day and feel like this is 
uh, a sickness that I know some people around me have. Not, mm. They're not close to me, but they are very, they are victims of feeling as though they're going to just wake up one day and their circumstances are just going to change just like that with them doing nothing about it. Take you know, your with, foot out that bed. And with nothing changing. Mm-mm. That's the biggest part. Like you think, oh, no- nothing's going to change. I'm just going to wake up and I'm just going to be a star. Or I'm just going to wake up and I'm just going to have a successful pod. Or I'm just going to wake up and I'm just going to have, you know, a, like a, f- you know, a, a family that loves me and I'm going to have this, that and the fourth or whatever. Nah, shit does not work like that. If you want it though, if you want it, it may not be this year, it may not be next year, it may not be next month, it may not be in a couple of years, but you know what, you get it though. Or you'll have, or you'll have, you'll have a nice slice of it. And it may not always be the way that you envisioned it, but that might even be the best part of it. Sometimes the way, the thing that you're striving for, yeah, whether it be family, com- um, uh, companionship, work, whatever it may be, yeah, you might envision it a certain way and then you're going down this road and you're chasing it and then something different happens. But that thing that is different could be the biggest blessing though. Do 100%. you know what I mean? Is that like being open to being able to accept new things and different things and that like can contribute some amazing things to your life but yeah man in the meantime between time bless up man i know my bridges know every christmas i have after five come to mind after five come to mind all my bridges know that after five o'clock i imagine you finish your bridges i've got alcohol at mine i have Right, and I yeah. just believe that if you want to come right, and yeah. bless up and just yeah. forget your stress for the Hold evening, one meds. you can come to mine. Strong. I, this, this is nothing about vibes. I'm telling you. Bobby playing in the background, not Valentino. He done some crazy things that made me not want to slow down. Absolutely. Bob Marley only. And then we just have a juice. Right. Yeah. The Quran, I'm Maggie. You, ready. So, come on. I'm there, man. Feel free to come out. My people, though. This is not an open invite. <laughs> yeah. Because um, to be fair, after five for a lot of people is definitely the time. Even if you're doing family or relatives or whatnot, after five, six, maybe even seven, well, after you yum food and that, it gets boring, isn't it? Go and see your other family there. Do you know, brother, do you know how many times I say to people, if you're younger, you probably look forward to this seeing the family thing like I did. Mm. But when you've seen the family for 30 plus years, <laughs> you need to mix up the faces you see on Christmas Day. You can't just have the same routine that you know is going to happen now. Yeah. Grandma farts at 7 pm. Like, yeah. it's just all long. Let's just mix it up. New faces. You know what I'm saying? After five, come to mind. Yo, talking of faces, yeah. Mm. I don't know who might have this Don's telephone number. If you've got his telephone number or he follows you on Instagram or you have some type of relationship with him. Bear, bear in mind, what I'm saying is speculative, but I believe that what I'm saying is full facts right now. If you've got his telephone number, he follows you on Instagram, or you've got some type of uh, relationship with this Don, yo, t- tell Salt Bay to lay off this coke. Tell him to lay off it. Because let me tell you something. He, every time I see this Don, bro, his face looks like he is... He looks very accidentally overdosy. His face looks so... Cokey. Drawn in. I'm telling to bits. His nose just looks a little bit sniffy. It's like, I'm telling you, he seems like he's having way too much fun. Yeah? And sometimes that way too much fun can end up being a madness. Yeah? Yeah, do you know Coke users, yeah? Jesus crispy. He's bro, he looks like the, the cocaine looks like he's kicking his ass to bits. Do you know the things about Coke users where I don't like I've never tried it, but I can see the results of it and I'm not Come and drug that. They never take into consideration what's happening. It just seems that their objective is very important. So, how do we result this to Salt Bay? I saw a man that just wanted a picture with the fucking World Cup. Right. He didn't care who was holding it to the point where he's bothering Messi. Nah. If you want to bother Montreal or Martinez or even Di Maria, Di Bala, I don't care. The greatest footballer to of ever. Of all time. Salt Bay, you're just going In too the mad. In, In the, the moment. moment. You're ruining the moment. For him to do a branding exercise. No, it stunk. It Bro. stunk. 
Bro, Sorbet. the way he's and he's got his top telling my man to hold it and he's even positioning himself. And it's like big man. Big man. You know what this is though, isn't it? Huh? Coke. Oh yeah, right. Off Coke the elbow. Coffee. Let yeah, me tell you CB. something. Could you imagine? C B look, you look, I can only imagine he's doing that on certain gal ass, you know, or, or even guys. I don't know what the, the vibes that he's doing. Um but because he obviously loves me. You know? So <laughs> I mean, look, like, if he loves meat and he's... It's not even that. Remember, he's doing... Certain it's man... Feed, and it's feeding man Certain well. man's favourite rappers are high getting fed like this, so... Right. It's, it looks like he likes doing it to the... Right. Man. Yeah, so, yeah, right. you know, Targeting. I... And that's fine. Th- there's nothing wrong with that's that. That's right. You understand what, what I'm saying? That's your flavour. And, and after salt, what's the name? Bay. You think about that. Anyway, carry on, I'm my brother. You. So, anyway, now, so, boom. That's his thing now. So, he seems like he's having way too much fun with that. But... I can only imagine what's going on behind private, you know what I mean? But we're not going to do all of that type of stuff. But in the moment, the greatest player of all time, no. it, do you know what? All of them. I think he should have just left everyone alone. Even the coaching staff. He should have left everyone alone. Because no matter what you say, it does gear towards what you're saying. He just wants everyone. No matter what, you're going to see Bay. No matter if, who you guys are, I'm going to see Salt Bay. I have to refer to this guy as Bay. I hate that. Not happy with that. I hate that. Not happy with Can that. Can I just Funny. say as well, like, like, and this is not even a knock, but I'm not doing it. Sometimes Salt Bay is literally the, he is living proof that it's the simple things in life that could just bust you to bits. It's just the level of consistency and it's the USP. Because, right then. Because if an alien came here right now and said, yo, explain to me what he does. <laughs> How long is that explanation, please? Bro, he basically has meat. He basically sprinkles salt on meat. He's a chef. But that that's the thing. He sprinkles salt. The thi- he sprinkles that's his salt. USP. No, look, listen. He might be the coldest chef. But why people are essentially going there yep. is so that they could witness Him this sprinkle. man sprinkle salt over meat. And I've seen men's knees go weak to the knees. Have you ever yep. had an encounter with a lady here where you start getting to the smoke and the legs start to have a little little shakage? I've seen men in this restaurant, right, where he's cutting the, the meat, right, and he's about to sprinkle the salt on it and see that same level of leg shakage that you see in the bedroom with a woman sometimes, yeah? I've seen men have that. They're doing that with the legs now. For me, it just makes me want, do you know what it is though? It lets me know, yeah? <laughs> I'm like, yo! Men, I mean- like, men like to get on women for doing all of this Dubai and doing this and all of that. Men love Some it. of them men like to get, you they need to start looking, it. you love it. Some of you guys love it. You're out here, salt bay, restaurant, all five of you, all of you are man doing this shaking for some little cool salt on food. You're not even this excited for your mum's cooking. I'm afraid for me personally, I don't understand it. Do you know what I hate as well, Chucky? Sorry to get in one because I've always felt like this. I hate the fact that I don't feel compelled to go. Sometimes I'm like, what am I missing out on? Why don't I want to go to this restaurant? They moved it to London. They made it accessible for me. I can more than afford it. I just don't want to go. And I'm like, but why? And then when I think about it, I'm just like, why for that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it is as well, yeah? Like, obviously it's the experience. People like to go for an experience and that. And I, so I, that's the thing that I, I understand the most, innit? It's like, the if you can create a good experience, people are always going to want to come back. People will want to will post it and whatever. And people want to be a part of luxury too. It's just, I think for me, it's not the experience... Like, it's not an experience that I'm drawn to. Do you know what I mean? Like, if my missus said to me, yo, like, oh, we need, we need to pay for this guy to come and do this, I would be so baffed. Why? Why can't you just give me the knife? Why can't I just have the salt and just sprinkle it on myself? But on the flip side, it is just a bit of fun. You should Absolutely. Some, some things you don't think too deep into. Absolutely. But I think fun sometimes could be wrong when it's less not thought about, it's for people that are... Yeah, I'm being a party pooper still. I feel like I'm being a party pooper, but in the same breath. Like, I love for, I love having a good time. 
I actually love having a good time. Good time. And if we were out and someone said, let's go there, and then he came out and he done all of that, maybe in the moment, I'm gassed. But you know, like a premeditated, let's go <laughs> yeah. there thing? I yeah. just can't. I th- it's just weird to me, bro. If you're out and you end up there and the my man's there, let's just try and get all these followers in. Let's do whatever we got to do. Come on, let's have a good time. But like... How much have you got to pay for him to be there? Because he can only be at one restaurant at a time, right? Or do you just have to just like... You just hope go there and there. hope he's there. Wow. He's fucking hit the belly. Do you know what the man is thinking? He's got to go and hope he's there, bro. And he actually ended up on the fucking pitch on the, at the end of a World Cup final with all... And that's, at the end of the day, regardless of what that people stinks, say, man. he s- somehow managed to do it. That stinks, and man. And the next day or the day afterwards or a few days afterwards, he was there. What was it? The, the president of FIFA was in his restaurant just like really just bigging him up. So clearly that was the link, innit? But you know what? I saw it going in. But do you know it's just it's just relationships, isn't it? Business the most the thing is football is just in, just to sum that part up, I just like, recognise football's in a place where it's just about business now, Chucky. Absolutely. The days have gone past where you used to watch Man United and you liked it and that's all that mattered. The people that like the clubs, everyone's here now. Mm. Messi's post is the most liked post in Instagram history. Is it? The, yeah, from my understanding. So oh. it's like it's just a place where everyone's at right now and you know what? I'm here for it. More um, people come to football. Love football, but Salt Bay still oh, people are banning him though. On Twitter, someone did say, I think the US Open or something like that. Yeah, I heard that still. Said you can't come to our yes, final. Not can't. that he was ever gonna go and not that he cared, because it's not the World Cup final. But still, that's the thing. It's like, it stinks. It's, it's easy to say this now when you know he, if he wasn't, cut, but you never know. He might have. I mean, look, it's it a just bra- stinks. Ultimately, it's a branding exercise, isn't it? Really, it's more more than anything. This is about the brand. Yes, it's like, yeah, he's at the World Cup and he's probably happy that Argentina won. But really, this is about no. I mean, let's this, no. This is about something else to me. This is about money. man. Them always try and get on women for doing things like this. I just think we're approaching a day and age. I don't ever. I don't know what you want to call it, but I think clout. Seventy-two million. It's mad. Let's call it. It's clout. Chucky, I think clout means more to men than it means to women. Go. I do. The things that I see men compromising themselves for, for attention, which doesn't drive into anything financial or anything that even makes sense within that field is unbelievable. This sort of situation for one. I've seen, brother, I've seen man do the most to go to this restaurant. I'm thinking about it. The most. And I'm like, what? Just because the guy's going to go and do this and and everyone's going there. Like, but why do you, like, I don't get it. Like, I get it. It's a bit of fun, but I don't get it. (laughs) I don't get it. It's not my thing. It's not really my my thing. But but I understand why like people would go still. It's the experience, bro. There's more examples that I can't think of right now, but I just genuinely feel that men love clout more than women. Ma- oh, absolutely. Look how much man love look how much man made podcasts. Don't even care about this artistry form of speaking and trying to create they just want to be heard. I'll tell you how you can tell sometimes how like men love clout, yeah. Go to a club, men are like trying to cram themselves into the DJ booth or behind it. Demand them because they just want to be seen in there, yeah. Because then obviously that way it kind of emphasizes the like enough times I'm like, yo, I'll be looking around and I'm like, I want to see my people around me in the booth, if anything, yeah. But sometimes I'm in, in the booth and that, and I'm like, or around the booth, and I'm like, who's my man? Who's this? Like, what? who's that? Sometimes I feel like I wonder how gigs and Skepta and them man feel sometimes where they take a look at pictures. And they're around people having a great time, and it makes it look like we're all having a great time together, but essentially. I don't know who you are. Right. No, that's, right. <laughs> like, like, that's happened to me and I'm just me. Yeah. Yeah, that would happen. I don't even want to know how much times it happens to Drake. Where you're just in yeah. a photo with people that you don't... And I know... But you know what? You can't men. get close to them type of man, though, still. Nah, man. Them, I, man, man have, they're, them man have their thing packed. Like, you can't just be next to... like. No, there's a couple of men in the UK. I'm not going to... To this day, I couldn't tell you what they do. Yeah, I hear that. There's man in the... I could, to this day... I couldn't tell you what they do. But they're at every party in all the pictures. I know. With everyone. Yeah. Clouting, For what? Clouting to bits. There's enjoying yourself. But and it does. But the thing is, sometimes it works. Because some women are drawn to, like, who's that guy? But like, you're why? Always, you're always there. Like, and you know what? For some women, that is... That gives them an opportunity to make a step up, in it? Because, like, right, you're always in and amongst everyone. 
So wait, let me just take one slice of this now. And then now, because if I take, and, you, and I'm in the mix, maybe I'll get to meet. Could it's, you imagine what some girls do to meet Chris Brown? Oh my God, they're out here doing real strategic marketing. I'm telling you. Real st t uh, strategic chopping. Real you strategic chopping. If I can get in here, or not, maybe not even chopping, but you're the guy in it. And obviously, you know him. So I'm a flirt with you. Yeah. I'm going to make you think that you can get some of this Panan bread. Now he's saying to himself, all right, boom. You know what, Chris, bro, I know a bag. Look, I got a cold one. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to bring a cold one over. Her and her friends and that. These times now, he's bringing his cold one over with her and her brethren and that. As soon as she's in the yard, left out. I'm taking a chance with this one. And then, you know what happens usually? Once, and I, this is actually, a, I'm not, this is, this usually happens with artists, like, and I've seen this happen so many times, yeah? Like, women will be like, head bent, hell bent on, I need the star. Yeah. Right? But the star can usually only take at least two. I mean, he'll take two, but he's not going to go with three. More time, it's just one. Yeah. yeah. So once it's evident that he's picked the vibe that he's picking and that, sometimes they start looking around, who's the DJ? That's when Chucky steps in. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it's like, those things happen, innit? Like, who's the next one? Who's the next one? Until it becomes hey. like, you know what I mean? But Chucky, then I can tell you certain guys, I'm not, obviously I'm not <laughs> pointing the finger at any guy. The game is the game. I've just been in, I've been outside. This guy doesn't even know how he's getting in. But the next day, his Instagram picture is at the table. Yeah. The main table of the guy talking about, yeah, man, God did. Like, <laughs> fuck off, it, right. man. My brother, you didn't holding, even know how you were getting in. Holding the next man's bottle. Holding the next man's bottle. I think men are the biggest holes anyway. I just think, the I think they're fucking... Fam, the pride element within some dons is disappearing right. by the day. Yeah. By the day, bro. Yeah, it's not. Disgusting. Have you got howlers? Because... <laughs>